He has been called the perfect fighter. George St. Pierre, GSP. An incomparable mix of raw athleticism and unparalleled technique. But in Ocean Away, a challenger lies in wait. Dan the Outlaw Hardy, a brash concoction of bravado and brute force. Dan Hardy, what a knockout! I enjoy being the dominant male. When I'm stepping in there, I'm looking at my opponent with excitement. I'm thinking, I can put a beating on this guy. My only focus is just to put fist to face as often as possible. I'm a martial artist. He's not. He probably doesn't understand the meaning of this, but after the fight, I guarantee you will. A reigning welterweight champion on a quest to cement his legacy. And an unbridled brawler seeking an historic upset. This is UFC. Prime time. Michelangelo has said, the danger in life is not to put your goal too high and never been able to reach it. Is to put your goal too low and be able to reach it. That's a danger in life. Me, I always put my goal very high. I reach a point that I'm not fighting only to win. For this fight, I will be the best George Shapier I ever been. In Montreal's northwest corner, the TriStar Gym serves as home to the UFC's reigning welterweight champion, George St. Pierre. With a March 27th title defense looming, head trainer Faraz Zahavi is charged with the task of improving the man many consider to be the most complete fighter in mixed martial arts. I think he's making his mark as one of the best of all time, and um, he's worked hard for it. He has an obsession with perfection. He's never going to be satisfied. And as a coach, it's very difficult. You got to find a different way to stimulate his progress. For Sahabi and the rest of Team GSP, the answer has come by having the welterweight champ add nearly 10 pounds to his frame, as well as hone his power and explosiveness through an assortment of new training techniques, including an intensive Olympic lifting regimen. Olympic lifters are the most explosive athletes in the world. They have the highest vertical jump. Compared to sprinters, compared to high jumpers, compared to any other athlete, they're the most powerful, the most explosive. So we brought in George here, and the results keep coming. His takedowns are better than ever, his takedown defense is better than ever, his striking power has increased. Everything's increasing, so we started doing more and more, and now it's just it's taken off. Okay, boys, round one. We're definitely seeing the biggest, fastest, strongest George St. Pierre we've ever seen. He's on another level than everybody else. I'm the most confident guy I've ever been in my life. I got the athleticism, the knowledge, the experience of championship fights. I got everything on my side. One round I can strike with him and try to knock him out. The other one I can try to put him down and submit him. Nice. He doesn't know what I'm gonna do to him. I can do it all. All right, boys, that's it. That's it, good work. For Hardy to take what George has now, I've never seen anything is impossible, but it would be something that would be so difficult it would probably almost kill him in the process.
the key to defeat in GSP is to not be afraid of GSP. There have been too many people that have stepped in into the octagon with him, giving him far too much respect. In the heart of Nottingham, England, lies the Liberty Gym, home to Team Roughhouse and its leader, Dan Hardy. Hardy's meteoric rise has taken him from relative obscurity to the brink of the welterweight title in just a year and a half. The guys I'm surrounded with are the same people I always surround myself with. I like my team because it feels like a family. Uh, I know these guys are going to look after me and they're going to prepare me uh, as the best they can because they've got my interests at heart. Two jabs. One, two, two, three. Relax those arms. And in. We go. That's it. We go jabs. Steve Papp is my, my striking coach. One, two, three. That's better. Go. Keep him up now. He brings an intensity to the gym. He brings an intensity to training. Come on. Here we come. One. Here we go. Two. Here we go. Four. I need someone to take charge because I'm a bit of a control freak um, and you, you don't boss Steve around. He's only a little guy but you wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of him. <laughs> That's it, pull it out. Jimmy Warled is my next guy. He's, uh, he's like a brother. He can push me in every area of the game. Go, let's go, let's go! My strength and conditioning coach, Ollie, um, is a, a very important person in my camp. Big push, big push, now leave him, leave him! And Ollie's got you know, a wealth of knowledge from you know, training all different kinds of athletes, from rugby players to swimmers. Get to the end! Get to the end! So he's, he's just a real solid guy to have. He's a, a real a real pillar of strength in, in the, the training camp. The good thing about Team Roughhouse, though, is that we all coach. Everybody on the team's got an open mind. Uh, everybody's willing to learn from each other, even from, you know, the guys that are fighting on the smaller shows up, up to the guys that are fighting in, in the UFC. It's brawl and brawl. <laughs> it's brawl and brawl. That's 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 what we do best. We just put ourselves on motherfuckers, beat the shit out of them, and that's real fast. Hardy faces the most formidable opponent of his career when he squares off with GSP in less than three weeks. Few outside the confines of Team Roughhouse give the underdog challenger a chance. In all of my previous fights, I've been an underdog, and it's you know, it's just so sweet proving people wrong. That Sunday morning when. The whole of the MMA world goes into mourning because all those GSP have got proved wrong. I'm surprised GSP can get his jeans on, man, with all the people clinging to his You know? Sunday the 28th of March is going to be a good day. A good day for Dan Hardy. It's the final day of Nottingham training before Camp Hardy relocates to the U.S the challenger inches closer to the most significant fight of his career. But the preparation began long before this morning. You know, I spent a lot of time running around the playground at school, kicking kids and stuff. I want to be a, a ninja, I want to be a, a martial artist. It got to the stage where my parents thought, we need to channel this, you know what I mean? We need to put him somewhere where he can do this and, and it's not going to be a problem. Hardy's parents enrolled him in martial arts classes at the age of six. Years later, the gym had become stale and he looked to put his training into practice. I was spending a lot of time hitting pads and bags and I was going to competitions and, and fighting within, you know, a set of rules and I was doing well. I'd gone down to a, a local video shop and I was looking through the videos and I found uh, UFC 2 and 3 and it, I was just, I was fascinated. It was something that I needed to do to prove to myself that I could do it. I was fighting guys who I didn't feel were tough enough, so I was looking for the next best challenge. Um, and the only way that leads is up, and that's how I've ended in the UFC. Since his 2008 debut at UFC 89, Hardy has become one of the sport's most exciting fighters and engaging personalities, steamrolling his way through the welterweight division en route to this month's title bout. I'm a believer in fight plans. GSP is uh, an awesome fighter, but the thing that I know about GSP is he doesn't take a shot very well, and when hit cleanly, he will fall over. That, that's what we plan on doing. We plan on hitting him cleanly and making him fall over.